Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Heir of Carthage here, or Heir of Jade, I guess in this case, and I hope you all are ready for some more action in the UN Bow campaign. This one has gotten pretty spicy over the last couple of turns. We've got a lot going on. However, we do also have immense power, and we should be able to flex it here. I still have a few of your comments left from episode 6. I recorded episode 7 just a few moments ago, so I won't be responding to the comments from episode 7. Some of these are still going to be coming from episode 6. Just so you know. Let's go ahead and fight this battle. We're going to need to in order to finish things here. It should be a land battle because we were approached from the outside. Or actually, we were attacked from the units within. The reinforcements, though, have to come through a choke point behind us. And all they've got is two um, bleak, uh, sorry, uh, dark shards. We should be in really good shape here. I'll explain what I'm thinking from a... Uh, strategy standpoint, but I think we can pretty much pin Lokir in a corner, just absolutely annihilate him with crossbow fire. It's very likely there's going to be a black art providing support fire because that has been the case uh, in our last few battles. Yeah, see, there is definitely a severe choke point here. Um, so I am going to line this up. Some of our swords are a little bit damaged, but again, because we have this choke point here, I'm going to be able to still have a significant sword line. And so remember that formation attack thing I mentioned here? I'm actually going to leave it on, and I'm going to put my swords in a defensive stance. And I'm going to do that just so that they'll just hold the line up front no matter what, and basically keep all of my enemies pinned over here, and I'm going to let my crossbows just rain unholy heck all over these guys. Um, so there we go. Yeah, I mean, the enemy is going to be under immediate fire. I need to be able to hit the range all the way up there to the edge. Um, there we go. And then we want Celestial Patchy to get in the thick of this fight very early. He's got a healing potion. Um, should be, and he's got this Celestial Sweep too. So I may actually start the battle grounded so that I can use that ability, which is a, a Vortex, and we'll try and pummel some people with it early. Uh, plus, we're going to be landing to fight anyway here. And then we've got Curse of the Midnight Wind. We don't have the overcast version available to us, but what's the range in that 200 meter range? So we should be good to line him up behind our crossbows here. And then as far as those three um, dark shards that are on the other side, I think I'll crush them with my Chrome in real quick and then just get the uh, reinforcements. So let's go ahead and start the battle. Where are those shards? Okay, the two shards back here. Honestly, those guys are so far away, I'm just gonna ignore them for now. And if they come threaten me, then I'll deal with them. But at the moment, they're just no concern. I'm just gonna keep my chrome in so we can focus over here. It does look like they're gonna approach me. So I'll need to be aware that they... But they've got a long march ahead of them. 40 seconds to reinforcements, so I'm going to fast forward. I'm going to get you and Bo into position. We are going to knock these guys out early. We want to get straight into low gear if possible. 15 seconds. Those other units dropped out of my vision back here, so I'll have to keep an eye on that. First among many. Two, one, here they come. Where's low gear? There he is. Swift and kiss. Oh, there's Witch Elves there. And I'm gonna dance around. Yep, Black Ark immediately. Immediately pummeled by the Black Ark. I knew that we would have that issue. Not loving those Witch Elves. I'm gonna go for it, though. I'm gonna go for it. There we go. I got all my ability. Oh my gosh! Patchy hit him like a truck right off the bat there. Did you see that? Yeah, those crossbows are still a good ways off. I'm going to bring my Chromen in and start smashing down crossbows in the back. Patchy is off to a good start indeed. I'm going to let my own crossbows get him. I do need to keep an eye out on those crossbows behind me. They're still a little ways off though, so we have some time as long as I play this right. Oh yeah, oh yeah, look at this! Patchy is just taking a dump all over Lokir. Holy cow! He is a melee beast! Look at him just taking chunks out of him. 
Unbelievable. That black arc sucks, though. <laughs> sucks bad. Um, but I mean, black arcs are cool. Like, I'm, I'm glad they're in the game. They are immensely powerful, and they're very fun when you're playing the Druki, so... Understood. Alright, we've killed all their stuff, which means my crossbows can turn around and get ready to take on the approaching crossbows, and I can take these extra swords. So... We have certainly... Certainly cleaned up this fight in this in the hurry that I had hoped and expected to. Oh my gosh, like Patchy is just a melee beast at this point. Decisive strategy. Okay, and we are getting those dark shards. They are going down rather quickly. I'm trying to get Patchy over to their leader so we can end this. Otherwise, my swordsmen are holding out. Perfectly fine. Right. Oh, they're gonna bombard my Crowman? Really? It's a very aggressive black arc. Okay, there we go. We're gonna take some damage in the process due to that black arc, but we're gonna get the job done and get it done nicely here. Man, that was amazing. Look at how hard this guy hits in combat. This Celestial General is awesome. 374 AP and he does a debuff of minus 8 attack and minus 10 defense. Magic attacks, if they have any physical resist, they just get pummeled. Man, that is... Patchy is a unit right now in melee. <laughs> I'm here for it. Let me get to some more of your comments from episode 6. Jeff said, I wonder if... or Sorry, we already went through that one. Francesco was the next one. Thanks for being such a long-time channel member. He says, I haven't bought the DLC, but I also agree that this adds to Cathay. Uh, it's, they're my favorite faction. I think you and Bo is a very well-balanced melee character. The last battle was so satisfying to watch. Yeah, he is very fun to play. And, and it's because, you know, you have that option of... Do I have to put him in dragon form or should I keep him in, in human form? You know, like, is there a melee blob I need to bust? Is, do I need terror more? Um, do I need, an, you know, to duel with a, a lord on foot, right, which the dragons aren't as good at? Um, so I, I do love the flexibility that you and Bo you adds. He's got some pretty thing. decent magic and mastery of that magic. Um, so, and then, like I said, the war drum was just a sweet ad for Cathay. Um, and it's, you know, it makes their turtle formations that much more effective. And the dwarves have got to be crying of jealousy at this point because Cathay is just dwarves but better. Like, everything the dwarves can do... Cathay can do it better. Really? We're going to lose this? At the Turtle Gate? So I'm going to lose at the Turtle Gate with a full army. And I get to fight from the walls and it's just Marauder spam? Or no, no, no. We don't fight from the walls. How did they get me out in the open? What is attacking the Jade Core? The oh, maybe the gate wasn't repaired. Perhaps that's the case? I don't know. It says they're going to win. They're most certainly not. Um, I could corner camp and kill these guys in a heartbeat. Um, but I don't even think I'll end up corner camping. I think I'll just put my troops right here, use this wall to hold down one flank, and then we'll use that forest to cover our skirmishers. Um, so let's go ahead and fight this. But I mean, this is going to be a beat down. We get uh, another comment here. Let's see. Uh, this one is from Jeff, but not the same comment as earlier. He says, I bought the DLC. The campaigns look fun. Uh, Total War Warhammer is a game I keep coming back to. Maybe it's frivolous expenditure, but he says, A, all my other vices are dirt cheap. B, I'm a single guy with no family and commitments. And C, I work 60 to 70 hours a week, so the money isn't a big deal to me. But having something I enjoy playing on the weekend absolutely is. See, again, everybody's circumstances are different. And so, like, the other day, I'll give this good example um, of, you know, this same mindset. And, and I'm not saying you have to agree with his mindset, by the way. I'm not telling you how you have to think, and you don't have to take it that way from me. Um, in any case, yeah, do I want to set up back here? Yeah, I guess I will, just to be able to secure a flank. A um, little bit of an awkward position to cover here. Can't get my troops to deploy properly. All right, whatever. I'll just kind of make it work here. There, I've got a line of jade keeping this forest safe. Feeling pretty confident in that, and then I'll be able to 
with my crossbows. This does put my cannon in a little bit of a disadvantageous position, though. I mean, could fight from right here and then just use this. Yeah, I think this would be a better position. Let's put my grand cannon up here, and then what we'll do is I'll take some of my jade warriors, and we'll still be able to hold one of our flanks. Oops, I'm putting these the wrong way. Yeah, this this will work just fine. So see, I've got a complete turtle. I've got the war drum to help me hold the turtle. We've got a great firing position for our cannon. Our crossbows are going to have perfectly good position. I don't think they have a lot of skirmishers or magic, so the blocky formation of my crossbows shouldn't be too big of a risk. And then my drum can cover everyone from this position, except for these two units. So let's let's change their positioning just ever so slightly. And now my drum has everybody in coverage. Okay. All right. Crossbows to defensive. Uh, let's go ahead and leave formation attack on and defense for my infantry, which means they just will not move. And then defense for the cannons. All right. Should be good at this point. Let's let our cannons just unload. And these guys are going to hit our army like a wave crashing into a wall of steel. And it is not going to go well for them. The amount of firepower that I've got in my crossbows is substantial. Um, we may even run out of ammo here before we can finish killing, but those marauders are not going to be good at cutting through the armor of my jade warriors. And if I can just use my cannons and crossbows to deal with their skirmishers, then we, we should have an easy win. They do have a few marauder great weapons, let's we'll keep an eye on those. But again, with the drum in play, and there it goes, it is in play. If you get two war drums, can you have them do like opposite abilities and like get the extra armor and the extra attack? I need to check that out and find out. Oh, their leader is actually on a horse. Um, that'll make a good target. These clowns get a barrier. I guess they're a Zinchi version of uh, marauders here. I'm gonna go ahead and target their their lord. He's on a horse, which should make him a viable target. Wow, that recharged their barrier very quickly. I guess we missed on our second volley. Ooh, choke on that ugly. All right, I'm gonna fast forward for a second because there's not gonna be a whole lot to see as we just wait on them to approach. There's a lot of Berserkers too. The Berserkers, um, they don't have AP, but they are gonna be substantially powerful. I must have missed him again because again, he picked up his barrier there pretty quickly. All right, the crossbows are about to unload. Berserkers are going to be excellent crossbow targets, so I will swap to them as soon as I feel like they're in range. And I'm going to go after those Marauder Hunters there. Okay, so our initial crossbow volleys have been effective. And let's start picking second wave targets here. Like that. Um, we need to get rid of their lord. It's a little bit of a problem. I went and got their skirmishers real quick with my crowmen. Go ahead and get out of that fight. I actually think I'm going to take these three crossbows and see if we can target their lord. So this Croman giving us some vital maneuverability here. We took out two Close units moment. of Berserkers. Our ancestors I'm going to go after some more Berserkers here. Ooh, their Lord just a couple point blank from the cannon. So their Lord is about to drop. We are up against a huge Close wave moment. of numbers. I'm going to hit those Marauder Horsemen with my crossbows, and I'm going to get my Crowman up here to harass routing units and regrouping units. I'm going to continue to pour fire into critical infantry targets. We got the Berserkers. I'm now going to target these Marauder Great Weapons because I do not want their AP value having any impact. I'm going to pull this unit up to help reinforce the center. I don't think we're going to have anybody getting around us in the back. 
We have a huge blob of enemies there. Let's start targeting that with our crossbows. We have effectively gotten rid of another Marauder Great Weapon, so let's pick the next one, and let's run a rear charge here with our Chromant. Here we go. So here comes the rear charge. Chromant have pretty good damage against low armor. So I feel pretty confident that we're going to, to hurt these guys. Even with just the Chromant. I'm going to bring this unit up to fill the gap. And I'm going to retreat this one back to a safer position. I'm going to take these guys out of formation and defensive and move around the flank of these Marauders. You can see their leadership beginning to fall apart here. Despite the huge numbers, they just do not have a way to penetrate our formation. I'm going to put our crossbows further back up on this hill where they can get better shots. And I'm going to pick this Marauder up again. Get rid of those guys. Let's see if we can sandwich these Marauders real quick. There we go. Let's go send some reinforcements this way. Okay, we are in excellent shape. All of their units that are relatively dangerous to me are being dealt with. My crowmen are picking up some really good kills on the regrouping and routing units. And this blob right here is looking vulnerable. So I'm going to go after it. Rear charge. Not much our lord can really do here. This magic is not actually useful to us at the moment. But... Alright, we just cleaned up the rest of this with our Chroman. And I would imagine we're going to see a complete and total chain route any second here. There we go. That's that, folks. I'm just going to let my crossbows... Take a few parting shots as the enemy exits range. And that should be good. Oh, actually, I already misclicked that. Let's just go ahead and end the battle. So that's a nice victory for us. Huge numbers of Norskins, but numbers aren't everything. It depends on the positioning. It depends on the defending units. It depends on the capability there. And clearly, we had a lot of capability that they did not possess just by sheer numbers. So a big victory for us. Uh, Moreland, thanks for being such a long-time channel member. Uh, he's got the gold shield going there. He says, didn't press record, LOL, because two episodes ago I forgot to hit record. He says, I feel your pain. Says, in the post-pandemic world, though, how many people have been on Zoom and have been talking away for ages and then realizing you're actually on mute? Classic. He says, I bought the DLC and just finished the Changeling campaign on Legendary. Thought it was an amazing campaign. Not without its bugs. Um, the long campaign victory reward of plus 10 Lord recruit rank not applying. Yeah, that seems like a miss. I did see, though, that, um, or at least I hope, I say I did see, I didn't see it, actually. I'm hoping that CA will bring out, like, a hotfix or something to go after some of these. Uh, so we'll see what happens there. Um, and then by the time you all are watching this, who knows, maybe they do. Uh, I'll be I'll be optimistic here. Uh, but in any case, yeah, thanks. And uh, I think it was Andrew Moreland, but it just says Moreland. So thank you. Appreciate it. And let's see. we got a leadership pennant we can throw on one of these. Actually, I'm going to... Stick that on my crow, man. And then let's go ahead. We can replenish, or we can take the cash. Um, I'll just replenish just to be safe in case there's another army right behind them that we have to fight another big... Oh, we weren't inside the turtle. Oh, they came out to fight me. Now I get it. It took me a while. It took me a while, folks. Boy, we need some staying power in this army. We do have the peasant bows, which are not amazing. I'm going to go ahead and put the infantry in this army. And then we can adjust that army some over time. That's my... That's always a questionable decision to not put crossbows and to keep the peasant bows. Crossbows cause considerably more damage. That's one of our... Oh, what do you call it? Um, quest battles. Alright, we can now take the gate back from these marauders. This was where we fought the battle, and I was confused as to what was going on, because, of course, I'm always confused. Got a war horse for a dragon-blooded dragon Shugengen. We can put the building in that will drop our upkeep, and we can put the building in that will help with growth, and this will help us substantially as we 
work on building up some cash. And then, like, this gate here is a little weak at the moment, um, so we'll need to stay and protect it, but we can eventually build these buildings that will help out a lot. Um, so let's take a look at a few things. It's going to be a substantial turn-in for us. Um, do you think you could, like, maybe kill him? Thanks. They're going to get Black Ark support yet again. Their Black Ark won't have anywhere to go now, and if I have to, I'll sail out and fight it. It's always a little risky, but I mean, I'll do it if I have to clear those guys out. I don't want them just sitting back here, threatening our flank. Um, we go ahead and do a recruit here to pull back that unit we lost. We've got some good units as far as crossbows go. And I'm going to switch that one over to... So over the next few turns, those buildings that we converted should start to add up. And let's see. Let's go back over to you and Bo. It's been a while, because we had a long turn end over there, but we are ready to attack the Golden Ziggurat. And Rakarth has nothing to defend it with here. Range plus 20%. That's going to go on our crossbow unit there. So we're going to occupy that settlement. Safe. Did Wolfheart snag this other one already? Yes, he did. Fortunately, I don't think he can make the move all the way to the Great Turtle Isle. That said, I don't know if we can make the move all the way there. We, we're going to have to hope that we can beat him to our target, or else I'm going to have to, uh, unfortunately, <laughs> take it from him, because I just can't allow that. I'm going to continue to point at the Warpstone Desert to help my caravans for two more turns in this caravan until we pick up a nice little cash reward there. Very much looking forward to that. Oh, income's looking a little better. Um, Celestial Riverlands, we can upgrade one of our settlement buildings. And then let's go to the Warpstone Deserts and an upgrade here. Let's take a look. We've got some matters of state we can do as well. Want to take advantage of those, build some defenses. Let's see. E. That right there to balance off the yin yang. And then we need defense here. All right, well, we got a lot of buildings built. Um, let's take a look at matters of state. And speaking of, let's find a place that has the most expensive, time-consuming build going on. Some of these settlements, like that one has three buildings going. That one's got a building that's going to take four turns. That one's pretty substantial build going on there. At Wei Jin, we could... Help upgrade that faster. Let's go... I think to... Zen Wu here. Not insanely important, but let's go ahead and use our Matter of State on it just for the... Oh, actually, Rush Construction, we gotta wait one more turn, so we'll wait the other turn. Levy the Provinces, I don't think I'm actually recruiting anywhere at the moment. So I guess we'll wait a turn on the Matters of State. Wait on the matters of state. Oh, ah, I didn't mean Dragon. for that lame rhyme, but you got it anyway. Dragon -blooded I'm gonna trade a few units here. Why did it move me across the map for that? Um, CA, please. Okay, I want to Let's see. I've got both kinds of lions. But can you have too many lions, right? No, not really. Honestly, I'm thinking about just dropping the Lancers and grabbing another Lion here. Drop that Iron Hail Gunner. Sky Lantern I don't love, but I'll keep it for now. Means we can grab one more Jade Lion there. There we go. So we'll have four Lions in one army. Let's go ahead and make that split. No real reason for me to disband this army at the moment, but there's also no real reason for me to be paying this upkeep. So I'll have to think about that one. We're in a raiding stance here, and I don't really want to be in a raiding stance. Are we at war? We are not at war with the Caravan of Blue Roses, but we might, we might want to be. We don't want to have an army doing nothing. There's nothing really to invade over here. I mean, I could send something way over there to get after Nikai, but that would leave this flank dangerously exposed. I'm going to move down here. Close me on. And we'll kind of keep this army. I think I'm going to go ahead and cut these. 
I'm so tempted to cut those lancers, but never know like what you're gonna need here. Um, there we go. I think regardless, we do have a. What is the battle there? Is that? The Celestial Blacksmith. I can't remember whose battle that is. I think it's you and Bows, and we can't do it right now because we're we're busy over there. Garrison Lord hasn't moved. That's okay because we're replenishing. I'm gonna assign General. skill points. Celestial Patchy is probably one of the strongest characters I have seen in a long time. That melee against Lokir Such was extremely treasures. impressive because Lokir is not a shove-over character. Like, that is... He is a tough melee character. So that was very cool to see how well he performed there. I was very happy with that. Alright. Got four skill points here. I think unyielding is always a good place to start out. And we have an imminent rebellion back up here at the Creeping Jungle at Spectasuma. It's not good. I do not wish to lose that settlement, and Wolfheart would probably snag it. The dragon's love is in doubt. Can I get a Celestial General? I can. Celestial it's going to hurt my upkeep quite a bit. Because of the uh, Fight and be additional upkeep penalties that we take. We cannot give up this settlement easily. Spectasuma has those gemstones that are going to be important. I'm not taking advantage of them at the moment, but we, we don't want to lose this settlement. So I think with the Celestial General in play, we should be able to hold that settlement. So it'll probably be worth the effort of protecting it. Got some commandments to dish out here. And... Compass selection skip and then end of turn. Let me get another one of your comments. This one is from Rory. He says, Hi, Air. Don't forget to assign all the good stuff you're getting from those caravan runs to your lords. I think you picked up the weapon from the vampire castle. Yes, thank you for the reminder. We will definitely take a look at it. I did not know I was at war with Nakai. Whoops. Whoops. All right, well, we know where Celestial Patchy's next destination is. Hopefully. We can get down there quick enough because we've got an angry lizard or crocodile on our, on our flank now. Military alliance sound pretty good right now. There we go. Okay. Well, we've got things to take care of. We've got things to take care of. Humility in all things. As soon as I pull away, their black arcs can just retake this settlement. Attention. I'm gonna have to fight their black arcs before I can head south, and they've they've got another settlement down here we gotta deal with. Nakai is right up in our grill, and I'm gonna lose settlements to Miao Ying if I can't get down there, take care of business. And it looks like the Caravan of Blue Roses. I didn't think we were at war with them, but we apparently are, and there is a giant force of them down Brave. here. Detected by the night. The dragon blooded. All right, I'm glad I kept those lancers. So now I've got two armies to help face them down. I'm in an ambush stance with Wind both. Shaper. So we'll see if we can catch any vampires there. All right, well, I don't think we have a choice but to attack these units out here and see. try and sink them, or else we've got a problem behind us that we can't keep ignoring. Plus, I'm sick of that black Leader art bombarding me. So here we go. Here goes nothing. It says we're going to take high casualties and lose. I disagree, and I intend to win. So let's get that started. Uh, but yeah, thanks for the reminder. I will check some of those things. Uh, Honorok, Honark says, I love using Jade Warriors in siege battles. It's the only time where the formation attack's useful. It feels like using hoplites in the streets of Rome, too. That's a good point. Um, they do operate very well in the streets because of that ability to hold the formation, and it can sometimes be quite useful. I also find it useful if you get into a blockier formation when, when you don't have risk of magic or bombardments. They can hold back heavier units like monstrous infantry and cavalry a little better with that formation attack. There are occasions where it is useful. I, you'll see me kind of switching back and forth on it here. It definitely has its moments. Um, so yeah, let me 
get our deployment started. We are going to want to move up and kill as many of their troops as possible prior to the arrival of reinforcements. We'll probably want to stay spread wide uh, to minimize the Black Arc bombardment damage that we're going to take. Because Black Arc bombardment damage we will take. <laughs> You're going to get hit. Alright, Celestial Patch. I'm just going to dive him straight down into those enemies over there and just straight up go for it. Yeah, I go out and attack. Okay, because we're going to be a little more mobile this time. Okay. I think we are set to go. Start the battle. I'm going to start moving my troops up. Celestial Patch, he's just going to go straight YOLO. Because he can. Right, take a position right here. I'm going right after the Supreme Sorceress. I do not want any of that fire shenaniganry. Alright, crossbows in range. Actually going to focus that death hag. There we go. I'm going to split my chrome in a little. Death hag's going down quickly. Celestial Patchy is... Got the Supreme Sorceress in a bad position here. There we go. I think that was a Crystal of Coonland that got them too. I don't know, but we took a... Oh, man, my Chromen are getting dumped on over here. Let's get them out. Supreme Sorceress is trying to get away from Patchy, but she's going to find herself the target of a lot of crossbows, which won't really put her in any better position. She's getting hit hard there. Let's get Patchy back after her, though, so she can't get a whole lot more spells done. I'm going to take my troops and move on up. Swing back in here now that those Dread Spears are... Not in a great position to help defend. Did we get hit by a bombardment that did that? Cascading fire cloak, okay. I don't think this sorceress has great magic right now. I guess we're having trouble landing hits on her, which is weird. She's debuffed significantly. We took out Lokir way faster, which again, makes no sense whatsoever. Try and avoid that. That so we got all the black arc bombardments rolling in right now. Okay. All right, let's bring our Chroman back into position. Keep watching for those bombardments. Supreme Sorceress is dead. There we go. All right, let's take it easy with the crossbow ammo. Not get, not get too crazy. I'm gonna move up over into this position. Let's go ahead and heal. Get reset for the next fight. There's a significant number of dark shards rolling in. We do have them outranged rather significantly. quite get the dodge done. There's probably another one about to come in. Yeah, there it is. Dodge that one. Dodge that one. Okay. Go. Alright, let's get our crossbows targeting on theirs. Alright, crossbow target successful, and we're going to take and come screaming in with our Chroman down this flank. I'm actually going to counter charge the enemy infantry. And I'm going to put a little Midnight Wind action right here. Oh, what? How did I... How did I let them right through the front door there? That was a miss. Patchy, I need your help. Back up crossbows. Back up, back up, back up. I'm bringing units back to help, but that was a mistake. Okay, we cleaned them out. I don't know why you didn't run your 
attacks here. Instead, you just got yourself shot to death rather not so brilliantly. AI is determined to chase me. They got Witch Elves enemy over here. I finally did catch up. Yeah, they berserked one of my crossbows over here. This was a little bit of a debacle here. A little bit of a debacle. But we're gonna find our way out of it. Okay. We await the enemy! Ancestors right died by blows! start shredding those witch elves now. The and I've got their crossbows under control. Yep. Start targeting their dreadlord now. The dreadlord has a lot of armor, so it's going to take some time to wear them down. But now that Patchy's free, we can swing in there, too. Okay. I'm going to leave some units back here to guard uh, the rear of my formation. How are we... How am I losing to a Dread Spear over here? I'd like to understand that a little better. Okay, their Dreadlord is now... Let's go crush this combat over here. They've got a crossbow back out on their flank. Let's actually turn some attention out there. Yep, here comes those units charging back towards me. Kind of expected that. Just keep cleaning this up over here. They've got crossbows coming back in from routing. Patchy got that melee cleaned up over there. I've got crossbows returning fire on theirs, so they're going to rout. Awesome. Let's get in here and finish off this Admiral. We're going to need to push the attack and finish these guys for a second time to make sure they're extinct and they don't just flee away and replenish. Hopefully I can reach them. So we did take some damage that would have been better had we not, but uh, it is what it is. We still managed to defeat a an admiral here for this rather large dark or black arc. I sometimes call him dark arc. I guess I'm going for the rhymes. Okay, leave that alone. Finish that dreadlord off. All right, Patchy kills the admiral, and we are able to end this battle. And these some important battles here. Next comment was from Mimilish. It says, I don't really have a unique take on the whole DLC thing, but I'll put, uh, put it in for the algorithm gods or whatever. It says, the content looks about on par with the previous two Lord packs, plus the free LC. Maybe a little bit more stuff, like the Changeling uh, being pretty clearly very different um, uh, sort of campaign, which is good. Even outside the can't really lose thing. Either way, I don't play the game enough for it to be worth this kind of price hike. Uh, I'd sooner go back and play some of the older DLC I never got to play yet and has more stuff in it. So basically, essentially, just the price is too much and not shocked. A lot of people are going to feel that way, and rightly so. You shall C spoil. CA opened that can of worms when they decided to make the price what it is. So I, I don't feel sorry for them uh, having to deal with it. Um, if it is what they have to do, Celestial then they're just going to have to be willing to s stand on their decision there and... You know, live with it. Which, again, may not be very fun. May not be very fun. I'm just going to auto-resolve this. Yeah, I'm going to lose a unit, but we can Whoa, we can replenish that pretty quickly. But this should get rid of all of those Druki armies out here. So there they are dead. Like, once and for all, dead. Now we can focus Patchy to the south, um, which we need, because Nakai has started an incursion that I was ill-prepared to fight, so we will do that. Speaking of ill-prepared, I could take this army south towards Nakai as well, and I probably should. So I'm going to get marching with this army, and we'll come down to head off Nakai. That one might actually be able to get there sooner, even. And I can protect the gates with this single army up here, I believe. Especially now that we can upgrade the Dragon Gate, make it a more substantial defense. Turtle Gate is already going to need some time, but with, with the one army up here, we should be able to hold. And 
let's see, we're going to be able to hold down here too. So I think it's a good place to end the episode. Uh, we were very successful in uh, many efforts here, though we've still got things going on. Um, I cannot reach all the way over here to finish Wreckhart at his settlement, but I can at least get there before uh, Wolfheart gets there, which is my objective here. This building does not belong there, and I would rather have this one. See, we lost a lot of income there. I, it could be because we lost that thing that Kai took. What did Nakai knock down? Yeah, I mean, we lost some income because we were trading those tusks. Our trade income took a little bit of a shot there. So, not ideal. <laughs> not ideal. And we took that army out of the garrison up here where we were getting a reduction in upkeep cost, so... We'll keep up the work, and we should be able to get it done one way or the other. Hope you all are enjoying this. Air of Carthage, signing out for now. I'll see you soon with some more action in the UN Bow campaign in Total War, Warhammer 3.